Flower and today I'm making a video podcast about several things that I have been thinking about because I've either written about it or I have been wondering about it because I'm writing about it. So the first and the foremost thing was um, time. And I know that my first book is actually about time, but then as I'm growing as a writer and as I'm exploring the metaphysics of it, I am not very sure about this whole concept of time and it is like changing for me. And I just wanted to put it out there, like what all, you know, thoughts are coming in my head. And even if it means anything, and even if it's logical because time is something that was in, invented as a concept um, to make things logical you know our happenings because only humans are concerned with times first of all we are the only ones that care about time because we want to measure everything and that comparison needs or arose the concept of time you can't compare anything unless you have time so time has to be there for anything to be comparative or measured and that's why the creation is an illusion and maybe it is only for us humans because we are the one measuring it and so i was like exploring and doing some research on um pillars of creation and recently i saw an article and uh, it was coming up on my feed, the news feed that I get. And it was about, you know, how scientists have come up with um, new information about the pillars of creation. And what is the pillar of creation? Actually, it's a nebula that's in space where, you know, the root elements, which is already there in our (laughs) Upanishad, they have already described it as the uh, foundation of creation, which is Um, air, water, soil, ether, fire. And so they, the scientists, have come up with the similar concept of about the pillar of creation. And I was like, this is, this is already a known thing to us. But then it drives me to another topic that I wanted to talk about was that these days I'm seeing that there is so much traction about um, promoting Hinduism that, um, you know, the people that identify with being Hindus as a, I mean, as a religion, I'm talking about that they are promoting um, Hinduism, but they don't know, they, they don't even know what Hinduism is. Hinduism itself is not something that we have come up with you know our ancestors the hinduism has got nothing to do with us being a hindu has got nothing to do with us these words were coined by people that invaded um, our side of the world and if you dive deep into the indic culture you would see that um, it is so much more and so much deeper so much scientific so much mythological so much metaphysical and all these people that are organizing these, uh, you know, um, hate posts and putting hate comments um, on social media, I'm pretty sure they have no idea about what we stand for. And it's just, if you are, if you're promoting hate for hate, I, I don't know what it's doing. You're just the same as the other. So um, that was another thing that was bothering me. And then um, I got into a kind of a argument with this guy. And it was only because, you know, this guy uh, pinged me himself. He pinged me and he told me, hey, uh, I want to support indie authors. And, you know, don't get bullied by all these traditional publishers and um, I read your book by the way and it's um, very complex Uh, maybe you should try writing erotica and then he said 
Uh, how about you write romantic books? You know, because I see so many authors, they're doing so great with um, rom-coms or just plain romance. And it was like, am I reading your book and telling you what to do? I am not out here to make money or I'm not out here to, um, you know, just be famous. I'm doing something that is coming out of me. You know, like Yuji Krishnamurti had said, art is what is being rejected by our body. So these are all the rejections that are coming out of me. I can't come up with something that I'm not. This is me. What I write is me. I'm not going to change myself or force myself to do something that doesn't come in naturally to me. I mean, naturally, Actually, I am a very romantic person and I do mix a lot of romance in my book. But then that's not the only thing that I can write about because I've, I've said this before that when I start writing, I get possessed and all these metaphysical theories you know, just start coming to me and are coming out of me. And so that's what I write. And I told him that someday I am going to find my kind of people who will appreciate or who will learn a different perspective on life by reading romance. So I am not going to change myself just to sell more books. I am not going to come up with um, something that I'm not or I, I can't I can't even invoke that that from myself. And that brings me to another thing is that um, the difference between Vedas and uh, Upanishads and Puranas that are there in our Indic culture. Um, because one is, the one side of it is something that was written because people witnessed it or it came to them. They, it was not through the process of thought. And later in Puranas, it has been described um, with human in human image, you know, like storytelling. And so that is very different from the other because the other witnessing that I'm talking about is, like I said, it's, it's not thought related. It was something that came to them and they wrote it. And afterwards, you know, like all of these gods that we have, or the images and everything that we have have been modified but just imagine like just imagine if Shiva really appeared in front of someone the way he truly has been described you know you you would probably faint or if Lord Ganesha were to come <clears throat> and appear in front of you because that's like half elephant and half human you can't digest something like that. Now we are just numbed. We are numbed because they they make it like look beautiful, you know, whenever they draw or whenever they make um, all these sculptures, uh, they make it look beautiful. And even now, um, you know, we have so many movies and other kind of depictions that are there which have just numbed us. But even then, even then, I think if, these God were to appear the way they have been described in the Vedas, they, if they were to appear in front of you, you can't, you can't take it. You can't take it. Our senses cannot take it. We're just not meant to take it. That's why they have been uh, dumbed down or not dumbed down, but they have been modified into storytelling. And that's why my husband was like very intrigued and very puzzled that how come um, you know, when it is witnessed, it's said that Ganesha is the creator. But when you look at all these storytellings, this is when the world already came to be. That's when Ganesha came. So, and, and, you know, that's why that brings me to another topic, which is time not being sequential. I was like, I told him that maybe time has no meaning. And okay, one was written later, one was written ahead, and one was probably witnessed, and the other one is just storytelling from modifying everything so that people can, you know, relate to it and digest it. But even then, even then, I think time has no meaning. 
and everything was there at all times and we just stream it differently and i have written this in my work in progress as to what it is it's and it's similarly written in our scriptures too it's that if every if the consciousness the universal consciousness was the ocean then memory is the salt in it it can be separated it can be mixed back in and you would never know the difference this ocean is not going to change and thought is like a drain pipe or a feeding tube that's little by little taking this ocean water and feeding it to us so that's why thought is very slow and very limited whereas what is actually there is just way too much and it is beyond our capacity well thank you for listening this is author pb flower go ahead and check out my books on amazon.com they're always free with kindle unlimited purchase um subscription sorry <laughs> and um otherwise they're also on a very discounted price so bye bye